Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be diving into some survival tech, literally. We're going to experiment with different ways to turn questionable water into clean drinking water. This is the kind of thing you want to know before an emergency hits, especially if we're dealing with a blackout situation where safe water is not easy to find. And as you see here, I combined a solar power bank with a BK2000 battery powered rechargeable water pump with a six stage filtration system. This thing is designed for camping, hiking, and for emergencies. It even has an emergency light built in. Second, we're gonna be going over the Life Straw, a personal water filter you can literally drink straight through. Simple, lightweight, and no batteries required. And finally, water purification tablets. Basically, just drop them in the dirty water. It's supposed to make it clean. All right, let's go ahead and start with some of these experiments. Disclaimer. I am not an expert, and I am still learning these skills myself. This video is for informational and educational purposes only. Always do your own research before attempting any of the methods, tools, or techniques shown here. Using water from natural sources can be dangerous if not properly treated. I am not responsible or liable for any injury, illness, or harm that may result from attempting anything demonstrated in this video. Always use caution. Follow local laws and guidelines. And when in doubt, don't take unnecessary risks. All right, so it's time to have some fun. So I got a cup of dirt from outside, and I'm just going to throw it into this water. And I'm going to mix everything up. So this way we have some real dirty water. Now, you're probably not going to find water this dirty out there, but let's try the extreme to see what happens. All right, so I have the pump going. As you see here, it's creating some clean drinking water. Just putting the filter into there, and then right here, I'm getting clean water. Now, this stuff is not magic. This handles only bacteria and sediment. It doesn't do anything when it comes to chemicals. Uh, to prove it, I had some coloring dye. I did the same experiment, and you see that the dye will actually go through the actual pump. So the reason why the chemical gets through is because they're smaller than the actual sediment and the bacteria. The microorganisms are big enough where they get trapped in the filter system, but the chemicals can get through because they're thin. To remove chemicals, you would need a better filtration system as well as some chemical treatment. Here on the screen is some ways you can use everyday household items to help get rid of sediment from your water. Now another fun fact, during peak season for a birch tree, you can get over a gallon of sap a day, and their sap is 99% water and 1% sugar. This is purified naturally. So for this next experiment, I tried to create like actual dirty water, like what it would probably look like if you were to find it, um, instead of that crazy mess that I made earlier. So I made a more realistic test. And as you see here, it comes out pretty clear. I'm actually going to drink it and taste it and let you guys know what it tastes like. But it, it tastes like dirt. Uh, it, it comes out clean as it, as it looks like here. But it, you get that, that aftertaste of dirt. Now, I didn't feel dirt when I drank this thing, but just it was as if the water was flavored with like a hint of dirt. I, I live to tell the tale, but it, it worked. It's more or less designed for like a stream or a pond, not for complete mud water. The way it looks in this video is how you're supposed to use it. Next we're going to be talking about is the tablet. So you basically throw the tablets in the water and it's supposed to purify the water for you. All the sediment gets uh, trapped at the bottom and cleaned water at the top. But I did it wrong because apparently there's a way, a method, and there's some kind of drip method that you're supposed to do with this. So I realized that I wasn't prepared. So one, I'm glad I looked into this. I'm going to have to do some more research on it, how to correctly do it with the tablets. But basically you can kind of see in this video from the little bit I did do that, that it was starting to separate where the sediment was going down and it was starting to clean itself and after I filtered out all the floating stuff at the top. I mean it's it, in a pinch again I, it might work but to be safer I would probably recommend for a beginner like myself just the, either the life straw or the pump. Uh, it's the least amount of work for those. The tablets I think there's like a science to it so Something I'll look into more in the future, but I, if I had to recommend one to you, I would recommend either the pump or the straw. Now the pump setup is like a luxury to have during a blackout situation. 
and plus having that solar powered charger as well um, combined is about maybe a hundred dollars or so but this life straw is under twenty dollars and you get a lot for it so with one straw you get about a thousand gallons of clean drinking water and for you fancy people out there that's about four thousand liters that gives you about three to five years of regular use it once the straw is done and the filter is full it will just stop filtering water so it won't allow you to drink dirty water now there's other ways you can get clean water you can boil water for about three minutes and then you can cool it and then drink it later that's one other way you can do it um, you can collect rainwater so apparently rainwater is clean enough to drink but with all the chemicals and stuff in the sky i don't know how much i would trust it i would run it through the same filter systems that we went over already I would definitely look into more advanced chemical filtration systems eventually too if you can afford it for people that don't live in the city like myself i'm probably going to end up investing in one of these mechanical pumps i already have a well so if i had something like this as a backup it might benefit me so solar disinfection so basically you can put bottles out in the sun full of water for about six plus hours and that'll help kill the bacteria and microorganisms now be careful using plastic because it's not really great for you watch out for the bpa in the microplastics that get released in the water when you're heating it up my recommendation, use glass and metal. Those are probably the safest options you can have. So I asked ChatGBT to run a simulation and how many people would die if there was some kind of a blackout event and people couldn't get clean drinking water. And this is what it had to say. One, local or regional blackout, a few states, three to four days. Estimated deaths, 10,000 to 50,000, mostly from dehydration in vulnerable groups and acute illness from contaminated water. Two, nationwide blackout, seven days. Summer weather, municipal treatment offline, limited bottled water distribution, estimated deaths, 500,000 to two and a half million. Urban centers are hit hardest. Children, the elderly, and people with medical conditions make up a large share. Three, nationwide blackout, 14 days. Summer heat, very limited aid. Estimated deaths, five to 10 million or more. Dehydration and waterborne disease become widespread. Hospitals cannot operate normally and sanitation failures drive secondary illness. Why the numbers are so high, most people can survive about three to five days without water, less in heat or with activity. Many households do not store a full seven days of potable water per person. When people are forced to drink unsafe water, severe gastrointestinal illness and sepsis can begin within one to three days for vulnerable groups. Logistics break down when the grid is down, which slows water distribution and medical care. Likely outcome in one week, Urban areas would be hit hardest because they rely almost entirely on municipal water systems. Rural areas with wells or stored water might last longer. In high-density cities with summer heat, mass dehydration could cause millions at risk by day five. Here's something ChatGPT didn't mention. If we're willing to kill each other over toilet paper, what do you think our fragile society would do in this situation? Those numbers ChatGPT mentioned would go way up. Society would justify their erratic behavior for survival. The governments that you leave so much faith into will not help you. You'll be on your own. See, if they had to make a choice between helping themselves or helping you, who do you think they're going to help? That's it for this video. So I hope that this survival tech video helped showed you the importance of how important it is to have drinking water, to have just the bare necessities in life to survive. It doesn't matter if you have tons of weapons. If you don't have water, it's over for you. You're, you've got about a week. Now, giant disclaimer, I am not a professional. I'm learning this stuff just like everybody else is here. I'm just letting you know the stuff I've learned along the way and to give you some kind of direction. Go do your own research before you do any of this stuff. A lot of this stuff seems like it's safe, but there's always so many variables out there. Is there chemicals in the water? Is there this? You're never guaranteed safety. I highly recommend you get books like I have um, because when the internet goes out, when they turn off that switch, that's it. You can't just Google how to make clean drinking water. So you're better off having some kind of paper material or off-grid databases, which we have videos on my channel showing you how to make off-grid internet stuff. Go ahead and make sure you check out that video. Get all the data you need because when that switch goes off, again, it's it. You're on your own and at that point you're just racing against the clock now i'm going to link all the products that i use in this video in the description but i just want to let you guys know none of this was sponsored at all all this was done with my funds um, to make these experiments to do all this was all my funds so this is not a product placement video this is just stuff that i have that i've been using that i liked and i want to share with you and again i really, really do like the straw for the sole purpose that it requires no battery no nothing just you I think it's a very valuable asset you should have in your kits. 
I made this video because I think this stuff is really important for survival and I'm going to continue to make more survival gadgets and more survival tech guides and the more I learn about this stuff I'll share with you guys but I think this is a good basic understanding. If you know more about this stuff please list stuff in the comment section please help other people and myself. I would love to learn more and also share so we can help each other. If you appreciate the content that I make please leave a like and subscribe and if you want to donate to the channel I highly recommend you becoming a channel member that would definitely help but thank you for watching definitely consider the stuff this stuff is very important and as always remember that safety is an illusion